Radio.com. Two great geeks. Changing the world one post at a time, whether you like it or not. <laughs> My name is Louis Matos. I am the mustache, and I am doubly excited because we've got two movies that we're going to do today. And no, you don't need to adjust your, t- your, your screens because we are not in color. We are in black and white. <laughs> and I am excited because I am here with my bestest buddy, Eli Figueroa, aka The Beard, coming to you live from sunny Puerto Rico. Okay, yeah, so we have two movies we're going to be talking about. Two. Uh, two black and white movies. Two black and white movies. The one, black, Mass, one black and one white. <laughs> the Quater Mass Experiment, 1955. That's the year I was born. And Quater Mass 2, or Enemy from Space, 1957. That's the year I was not born. Uh huh. Okay, so, and this is a VIP. Do you remember what a VIP is? Uh, Victims Incorporated, please. Vintage Iconic Playhouse. Uh, Vintage Iconic Playhouse. So, yeah, we take two very classic movies, black and white, and we talk about them. We're going to talk about these two? Yeah. I hope you're ready. <laughs> I am. Uh, usually I'm going to have a VIP. I know it's been a while. It has it? Uh, it's been a little bit of a while. Um, we talk about background. Background. Right, we'll start off with background. So, the Quater okay. Mass. I was born in, in, in the Bronx, uh, in a, a, a hospital called uh, St. Francis. Way, way, way back. <laughs> we're talking about background. All right. Um... The Quater Mass Experiment is a, is also known as the Creeping Unknown. The Creeping Unknown. Well, or the Creepy Unknown. <laughs> uh, a 1955 black and white British science fiction horror film produced by Hammer Productions. Mm-hmm. Yes, we're a little fixated on Hammer this month. Yes. Geektoberfest. This is Hammer Month. Based on the 1953 serial written by Nigel Neal, produced by Anthony Hines, and directed by Val Guest. Two very hammer stalwarts. Now, Val Guest is a very famous uh, director. I mean, he went on to become an extremely famous director. Okay, cool. And uh, so, oh, the movie stars Brian Donlevy and Richard Wordsworth uh, and Marja Dean. So, very good actors. Yeah. Um, maybe not so much in the case of Marja D. <laughs> Brian yeah. Don Levy was an American. Uh huh. He was known mainly for playing tough guys. Uh huh. He got, a, I think it was an Academy Award nomination for being the sadistic sergeant in Bo Ah, uh, yes, I do recall that movie. Yeah. All right, so in 1953, this is how it started. Two days. After the last chapter of the serial aired on BBC television, Hammer was sniffing around to buy the rights of the Quater Mass experiment. Um, they paid 500 pounds, and the creator, Nigel Neal, was not happy. Because he got diddly. Uh-huh. It took the BBC 14 years in 1967 to pay Neal 3,000 $3, pounds, I'm sorry. In recognition of his creation of Quater Mass. So eventually, and that, was was the, the, that was the kindness of their heart. Yes. They did not have to do that at all. It's just that, you know, Neil was upset and he kept letting them know he was upset. You know, and to have him, you know, be upset, you know, he's under our contract, we may as well just give him some money to shut him up. Shut him up. All right, so we're going to discuss about characters, and we're going to discuss them briefly because we have two movies to talk about. So Brian Dunleavy is Professor Bernard Quatermass, leader of the British American Rocket Group. He's smart, he's bombastic, and a little abrasive. A little? <laughs> a little? Yeah, he's a horse's ass in this movie. Yes. He's a little better in the next one. Uh-huh. Richard Wordsworth as Victor Caroon, astronaut who travels into space and returns a little catatonic. <laughs> and he is um, a really good actor in this movie. 
Considering he has nothing to he say. He has nothing to say. <laughs> he, I mean, he has no lines. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, they, they compare his performance to that of, of Boris Karloff in, in, in Frankenstein, and I can see it. Absolutely. I can see it. The guy manages to convey emotions with his eyes and his body language, or even lack of body language. All right. Then there's Jack Warner. Uh, he's Inspector Lomax, a dedicated Scotland Yard detective who goes home only to have be, to be called at home, oh, you got to come in, and he comes back in. <laughs> I mean, that's all we see of his wife. That's just that brief little, I don't know, 30 seconds. Hi, baby. <laughs> uh, sorry, I got to go. They just called me. <laughs> all right. And then there's Marja Dean. The former beauty queen is Mrs. Judith Caroon, the wife of the astronaut. Uh, bullheaded, capricious, and absolutely no doubt loves her husband. Okay, it's very clear because she has to. Too bad they couldn't get an actress to do all that. <laughs> I know. God bless her. Um, she was dating one of the executives, so that's how she got the job. Yep. Um, and she was a former Miss America. Lionel Jeffries as Mr. Blake, um, and I only mention him because he immediately is in the beginning of the movie, and that's it. But he's Grandpa Potts from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> Lionel Jeffries is famous. I know, but I saw him in the beginning of this movie, and I was like, oh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> and so I knew I had to mention him, so... All right, and that's all we're going to talk about as far as the cast because it's really not a character. It's driven not a story. character driven, other than than Bernard Quatermass, uh, and he comes across so now, as the back. Go to the plot, uh -huh. and usually that is your purview. So, no, well, the plot basically is that Bernard Quatermass is the director of the British American Rocket Group, which in the second movie becomes the British Rocket Group. So I guess America got cut out. Um, they get, they have a, they built a rocket, a spaceship, and sent three astronauts out in, in, into space. The the ship came back, crashed, landed. When they investigated, they found the spacesuits of, of two of the astronauts empty, and the third uh, astronaut apparently uh, catatonic. And then in uh, so they convinced the astronaut's wife that it'd be better for him to, 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 to stay at their medical facilities because they're better equipped to handle whatever it is that he encountered out in space. So then they figure out, eventually they figure out that, um, well, they're having trouble with, with, with uh, figuring out what's wrong with him. And she eventually convinces them to let him go to a regular hospital. So they, they transfer him to a regular hospital. And then they figure out that, that they were vis the astronauts were visited by uh, aliens, and and th there's a possession going on. This is an alien possession uh, movie uh, in which the astro the surviving astronaut begins to mutate and um, convince that that her husband isn't getting the, 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 the proper care. She she finds a way of, of, of bring him out of the, the, the hospital. Meanwhile, he becomes, the mutation reaches the point where he becomes um, monstrous. And as, as time passes, uh, uh, animals die, people die, he begins to transform more and more uh, until there's a final confrontation. I don't want to, I don't want to give too much away, but there's a final confrontation between him and, and, and Crater Mass, in which Crater Mass uh, saves the world and, and, and makes it safe for mom, apple pie, and, and the flag. Okay? You can't escape it. Maggie, look! Nothing can destroy it. It's coming for you from space to wipe all living things from the face of the earth. Beware of the creeping unknown. This woman is about to learn a terrible secret.
she will never be the same again. Because this man knows that same secret, he will never speak again. To both of them has come terror in the form of the creeping unknown. Three men went into outer space. Only one of them came back. Came back a strange, distorted creature, haunted and possessed by something beyond human understanding. What was the terrible secret he could not tell them? There's a whole new world out there, a wilderness, uncharted. And he's been there and come back. He's got the map. Unlock his mind for me, Briscoe, and find it. I know you can do it. It isn't just a question I know the strain and tension you've been under, but to stop now when we're so close... Brian Donlevy, he dared an experiment that shocked a nation. You've destroyed him like you've destroyed everything else you've touched, Kent. There's no room for personal feelings in science, Judith. An experiment that created the Creeping Unknown. I want to call around the entire area, evacuate all public, get information to check up every movement that's likely to take place inside this radius tonight. Yes, sir. Warn everyone not to touch anything unusual they may find in the streets. So now, let's go to critical response. Uh, the movie was very well received. Yes, yes, extremely well received. Some people loved Don Levy as the Brian doctor, Levy. yeah, as, as Dr. Quatermass. Quatermass. And others hated him. So, you know, mixed, mixed bag. Part of, part of it was the fact that he was an American, and uh, uh, some Brits felt that it, he should have been played by a Brit. Not, inc not also included by the Neil. Not Neil, Neil not, right. He didn't, he didn't approve. The, the writer, absolutely. But Hammer wisely knew that, that they needed an American name in order to, to promote this. In America. In America. And, and, um, and Don Levy is, is, was a star. Um, also, Wordsworth, the standout actor is Worth Wordsworth, who does not speak, as we've already mentioned, but gives us a tortured soul Akin to Karloff in yeah, yeah, As Frankenstein's Monster. He has the most expressive eyes. Absolutely. The most expressive eyes. All right. So that's basically uh, how it was received. I want us to go to dislikes and likes. Do you have a lot to say on that? No, I have um, two dislikes. Okay. Only, the only, only two dislikes. The, the first one is... Um, Quatermass is too rough in this movie. He is too abrasive uh -huh. in this movie. He comes across in the beginning of this movie like, like the villain. In, 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 if you if you're unfamiliar with the character or unfamiliar with this movie, you would start out this movie swearing that he's the bad guy, and then waiting for one of the others, uh, 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 his assistant or, or the Inspector the Lomax. Or Inspector Lomax to, to emerge as, as the hero because he is so uh, abrasive. I think it was it was maybe too much. Then and that's so that's my, my first question. And the second is that it is a little slow moving in the beginning. In the, in the very beginning it's a little slow moving. Um, it doesn't it, it doesn't pick up the pace and, and, and the mood until you actually got the astronaut in the hospital, you know, in, in, well, not in, in, in their hospital, but until until you get him to that point, that's when that's when it becomes extremely moody and and and, 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 and suspenseful. The rest of the setup, you know, I think the setup may, may have been a little bit too long. I don't, I don't know, but that's really my, my, only, my only my two slides. My two slides. Yes. Otherwise, I, 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 I love the movie, I love the, the, the climax, I love the, the I love uh, Wait a Master's last line. They asked him, what do we do now? And he says, we start all over again. Mm -hmm. I love that. And he walks away you know, with that Brian Dunham. He knew that was going to be a sequel. <laughs> 
I gave he said I gave that kind of a performance. We gotta do this again. We My dislikes are, are are basically just one, and I thought it was the movie was too short. I can see that. I can see that too. Yeah. yeah. Because I would have liked to see the astronauts before they went up into space. Because I think that would have given us the change in words work. They would have also, showed us. Also, there could have been uh, characterization, some sympathetic characters uh -huh. that then when they when they, when they're gone, uh -huh. uh, you feel it. Because yeah. right now we didn't feel it because we didn't. We didn't right. We didn't care. In the beginning of this movie, there when the ship comes, to, there's only one astronaut. Two of them. Uh, we don't know what happened to them. So I would have liked to have seen them. Yes. Before that, just to get context and to see the change in Wordsworth with his wife. You know, you know, bye, sweetie. You know, bye, bye, bye. yeah. Imagine if he had been played it so expressive uh -huh. and so emotional and so animated, and then and then to be one hundred and eighty degree different uh, after he comes back. Yes, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's just my two cents. <laughs> In any case, so I, that's the that's what I would have done to change because I thought that yes, Wordsworth. Uh, a performance is compelling, but I think it could have been more so. Also. Anyway, and so that was the one. And then, um, one of the things that I love is that there is connective tissue between this movie and 1931's Frankenstein. The, the, the monster Frankenstein of, you know, uh, Frankenstein's monster. Because of the fact that do you remember the little girl? Yes. <laughs> yes. There's a little girl in that movie, yes. and there's a little girl in this movie. And so I think there was an absolute, an attempt uh, 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 to, to try and connect you with thinking, oh wait, is this, are they trying to say that this is Frankenstein's Frank monster? Frankenstein's monster. So yeah, and then I loved Hammers doing this 1950s, sci-fi horror of aliens I mean it's it's what we loved about the 1950s movies yeah but you see but the, the beauty of it this was um, an intelligent alien movie uh -huh. not not you know not not bug-eyed monsters uh -huh. not not uh, uh, a, 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 a movie that 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 creeps you out, yeah. and they specifically went. Hammer specifically went for an X rating. They went for an X rating, and they, they knew they were going to get it, and they went and they exploited. It. <laughs> they, and it has no no X in it. I mean, it's not like this is a pornographic movie by no, any means. But but um, the in, horror in, in in Britain, X meant that you had to be sixteen or older in order to to see the, the movie. <clears throat> and they knew that that was going to give them free advertising. So they even took out the E in uh -huh. experiment. Uh -huh. And they were, doing, they were throwing that X all over the place. And it worked. It worked. Obviously, they, they, this movie was very successful. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, we're now to the point where we have ratings and recommendations. Mm -hmm. So what say you? I highly recommend this movie. I love the, the character of Peter Mass. Uh, I love this movie. Uh, aside from those two things that, that, that bothered me, and I agree with what Lewis said. So I would give this a four and a half uh, rating. A great four and a half rating. All right. Yeah, I, I mean, I really like this movie a lot. Um, I'm a little more harsher critic than you. But uh, so I, I say four great geeks. Um, it's still. I absolutely love Don Levy in this movie. I absolutely do. Yes. Even though he is a little bit of a jerk, like I said. Um, but I... The man is crazed by the fact that his ship has returned and he can't get to it. I mean, he, he doesn't know what's going on with the astronauts. So, you know, there's a lot going on in his head that we don't see. Um, but I... I felt, and so I am very uh, compassionate about Don Levy playing that role. <coughs> so yeah, four great geeks for me. 
absolutely a great movie, or else we wouldn't be discussing it in a VIP. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that goes what I'm saying. Uh huh. All right. So um, there you go. There you have our ratings. Yay! So now we go on to our next movie, which is Quatermass <laughs> Two. Quatermass Two. Or Enemy from from Space. All right. Uh, it had a second title. Which I'm okay with, you know, I, I think Quatermass 2 was kind of like too dead on, but they should have had Enemy from Space versus Quatermass or something. They have to include Quatermass in the title. Anyway. It, was, it should have been Quatermass, Quatermass, semicolon, uh, Enemy from Space. Okay, cool. That would have worked uh -huh. Enemy from Space. All right, so... Crater Mass 2 or Enemy from Space is a 1957 black and white British science fiction horror film produced by Anthony Hines and directed by Val Guest. Val Guest. Wow. Yes. I wonder where they got those people from. <laughs> and starring. It stars Brian Dunleavy and now John London, Longden, who took over as Inspector Lomax. Mm -hmm. So we had a cast change. Cast change. We know it's done a character change. So, the first Quatermass experiment was such a hit that before the newest BBC serial, before the serial aired, Hammer had bought the rights to Nigel Neal's work. In fact, Neal was allowed to write the first draft of Enemy from Space because of his sour grapes and yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so he, but rewrites changed the original work substantially. <laughs> So that's the background on that. All right, so again, with uh, this movie, there are not a lot. Now, mind you, the cast is bigger, but they're more like grade Z players. Yeah. <laughs> so, first off, we have Brian Dunleavy is okay. Professor Bernard Quatermass. Again. He was a little less of a jerk in this movie, just like you said, but, my, but Nigel Neal wasn't happy with Dunleavy, who was even more of a raging alcoholic at this point. Right. Um, now, I don't see that in the performance. At all, at all. Producers would put him on a coffee drip for most of the production, it was said, but he would lace the coffee with whiskey. <laughs> the thing is that apparently Val Guest knew how to handle this. Uh -huh. Because you're watching the movie, I had no idea that, that, that Brian Donnelly, Donnelly was an alcoholic. Uh -huh. Nothing in his performance uh, told me that. As a matter of fact, I thought this performance was better uh -huh. than in the, in, in the first movie. And even Nigel Neal had to give up the fact that he was always professional. Yes. <laughs> so so, so, what, it, so what difference does it make? All right. A wise man once said, a difference which makes no difference is no difference. All right. So John Longden was Inspector Lomax. Jack Warner was unavailable, but Neil liked Longden better because he spoke authoritatively yeah. the way a Scotland Yard detective should speak. Although he doesn't really get to speak that authoritatively when his he goes to see the commissioner, yeah. and the commissioner is one of them. Yes, <laughs> well, he that, that's, that's why he didn't get to, he shut himself up, uh -huh. yeah, basically. All right, so, and then Sid James plays uh, a drunk reporter, <laughs> so he does play an important part. Uh, he is there. That is, that, 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 that was a good, mm -hmm. uh, good, good character. He didn't have that, that much to say. screen time, mm -hmm. right? But you got across who he is, what he was, so that... Later on, when what happens to him happens to him, you feel it. Absolutely. Uh, it's funny because Neil, Nigel Neil said he provides comedic value, so he liked the drunk reporter. Mm -hmm. But, you know, although his part gets serious very quickly. Yeah, his, 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 his what, he, what he brought to the movie, uh -huh. right, wasn't funny. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So those are the three main characters that I talk that I talk about simply because they're major to the story. And then there's this, but this movie is very action oriented. Mm -hmm. 
much more than, than, than the first. You get guns. You get car chase. You get fights. You got <laughs> shootouts. Uh -huh. You got you got. And 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 uh, Quater Mask becomes a, a, a bit of an action, action hero uh -huh. in this one. You know, it's not. Uh, He's not just standing around talking. No, I'm waxing poetic. He is not the professor in. Okay, everyone, open your books. I'm about to bore you with my monotone. <laughs> no, he is not. Lomax. I mean, Quatermass is not a monotone character. There's a lot of up here yeah. and very little down here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and his face. I love his face. <laughs> and if that's drunk, I'm telling you, I'd rather see him drunk than serious. Than than just you know, sober, absolutely. Yeah, he 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 has the talent for giving this withering look, uh -huh. like 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 you don't deserve to live. Um, I, love the, I love this. And in the first movie, he's short with the astronaut's wife, mm -hmm. and then he apologizes to her. So, I mean, he, he was like, I know I talked to you sharp. I shouldn't have been speaking to you like that. But, you know, absolutely. Great, great. But we see the change. Yeah. Okay, so now we come to the part where it's plot. Okay. Uh, go away. Greater Ass 2 is also an alien possession movie. But very different from the first one. Um, but in this one, what we have is that it's now the British rocket group. Right. It's not the British American market. No, it's not, not the British American market. Oh, we don't need to sell it to the Americans. And, and uh, Quatermass and his, his rocket group are planning these um, habitats, the uh, moon, uh, moon, moon bases, moon, 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 being able to live on the moon. And they have a table and, then, and it's planned out and everything. And they get reports of these meteor showers uh, falling in, in a uh, out of the way place in, 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 in England. So his assistant goes to, uh, to investigate and winds up uh, basically getting getting uh, possessed. As I said, this is an alien possession movie. And then when uh, Quatermass continues the investigation, he finds out in this remote location uh, the duplicate of his habitats, the habitats that he's he's creating to, to live on. They the copied earth. him. They copied. They copied his work. They cop They copied his stuff. And when he tried to find out who this is and what it is and what what's going on, he got attacked. He got attacked uh, by guards, right? So I'm not I'm not I'm not giving anything away by by by, by saying that the humans um, be, by being possessed, the possessed humans have a mark, often on on, on their face, sometimes on their hand, which uh, uh, alerts. Uh, Quatermass to the fact that there's something going on over here and, and, and these people that have that, 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 that mark are acting funny. They're acting uh, possessed. So he tries to find out, you know, he brings in a, a, a Lomax. He's trying to find out what the heck's going on. His assistant is, 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 you know, has disappeared. He got attacked. Uh, it turns out that, 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 that uh, the government is also trying to figure out that the government pouring money into this this uh, into this site, mm -hmm. right? And 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 there are, are uh, there are MPs that don't know where that money is going, and they want to investigate. And so uh, they, they they have a uh, a group that's going on a fact finding tour of this facility, and and Quater uh, Mass piggybacks on, on 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 that, and it goes wrong. It goes it goes it goes horribly wrong, and he winds up uh, on the run. And having to to escape, and he find he figures out that the possessions have reached the highest level of government, and and um, basically uh, Britain and the world are in deep doo. Okay, so it ultimately turns out that it's an, uh, an invasion attempt, um, and that they uh, they they're creating uh, food. Uh, food sources for the the aliens who um, can uh, 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 can survive in our environment, and so uh, I don't want to give it too much away, but it, it 
um, the monster at the end of the first one is in this one the monsters are a hundred times better. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. It, it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, pretty big. It, it, it's big. This is this movie is on a much grander scale than 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 the first one. I mean, it is with armies fighting and and and, and the shooting and and and, and, and this drama and and, uh, and and Quater Mass goes undercover and. and Big, big. But, once again, Bernard Quatermass pulls the, 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 the planet out of the fire and he saves the world. Yeah. And we have more, more Quatermass after that. Yeah. <laughs> listen, listen very carefully. If you ever hear a sound like this, run for your life. Run, run before it is too late, for if you stay, you will lose your soul. Coming closer, closer, closer is an enemy from outer space. From out of this world it came, a horrifying terror that threatened mankind, haunting and possessing every human being within range, an indestructible danger beyond all earthly understanding. Vincent Broadhead is dead. Dead? I watched him die a few hours ago in that plant, his whole body covered with some kind of corrosive poisoning, eaten away. It poisoned everything it touched. The mind and the body of man was no longer in his control. They ran from this unknown menace, but there was no escape. We're holding this block. We've got to. At least until the oxygen takes the place. What's in those doors, mister? Resistance must cease immediately. Pay down your Yes, what is it? Tell us. Inside those domes are creatures from outside this earth. Are you mad? I've seen them. Thousands of tiny creatures that can join together and expand into things a hundred feet high. Um, let's talk about the reception. Okay. Um, the reception that this movie received. Although Quatermass 2 has mixed reviews, the movie was commercially successful, but <laughs> its success was overshadowed by another Hammer movie that made more money um, called The Curse of Frankenstein. The Curse of Frankenstein. <laughs> the first of their Frankenstein Movies. was released in 1957, the same year, yeah. so they competed against each other. And, 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 and the Curse of Frankenstein was a color, this, this is uh -huh. Hammer, uh, Hammer Horror in Color, uh -huh. which they did so well. And they took me, you know, it, it, it made, uh, uh, Queen Masters couldn't compete. Now don't, don't get me wrong, it, 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 it didn't do badly, uh -huh. I'm not saying that it, it flopped. It's just that it didn't make quite the impact that the first one made for that reason. And this is a very enjoyable movie. Yes, I, mean, it is. I actually liked it more than, than, than the first one. But I understand that that is simply because of the excitement. Because it is a more exciting, mm -hmm. a more adrenaline uh, rushing movie. Yeah, it's definitely more action. All right, so dislikes and likes. Um, um, I, I can't think of anything that I that, that, that I, I, I dislike. I mean, uh, Quatermass is still abrasive, uh -huh. but much less than than, no, than, than than and then and then I think part of it also that yeah he may be abrasive, but he's also sticking his neck out. Uh -huh. So so you're willing to, to to forgive more because he's sticking his neck out. I mean, he's really in the middle of the action. Here. Uh -huh. Yeah, he goes, uh, he piggybacks onto the inspection team. Yeah. He goes onto the and inspection team. And almost gets him killed. Yeah. And almost gets him killed. Yeah. Only because he's, sm he's smart that he doesn't go with everybody and he goes, wait, why are we going in there? Are you going to lock us in? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Why are you locking us in? <laughs> I'm not going in yeah. there. And, and because of that, a little pushback, he don't die. All right. Yeah, so, so I, I, I really don't have... Like I said, I, 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 um, I, 
let me tell you something. Maybe it's unfair, but maybe I would like to have seen it in color. You know, especially since they did no, in the same true. year they yeah. did they did Dracula Frankenstein in color. I think they they were trying to develop this greater mass aesthetic, and so that's why it was black and white. Because that was a choice. That wasn't like. Um, also, this movie's too short. That's my only dislike. It's an hour. It's not even an hour and a half. It's eighty seven minutes. Eighty seven minutes. I yeah. think it was eighty seven minutes. And, and I'll tell you, it could have gone. I mean, you could have had a lot more with ten minutes mm -hmm. added to this movie. Mm -hmm. And the uh, suspense at the end is absolutely fantastic. So yeah, that's my only dislike. So your like? Um, uh, there's a lot of likes. A lot of likes. It, it was more action. Uh, the the the. I really like the monsters. The way the way they, you know, understand that the limited uh, uh -huh. special effects of, of this thing to present the monsters the, the way they that shows real creativity, and I appreciate that. Um, I like uh, 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 Donovan's uh, Crater Mask even more in this one. Less abrasive, more uh, action oriented. Um, they, they, it's such a well uh, written yes. story. Well, yes. It's such a well written story and, and, and well thought out. It makes, and it makes sense. It makes everything make uh, perfect sense. Um, yeah, I, 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 really, I really like this movie. Me was, was, I liked it better. Now don't get me wrong because I really liked the first one. Oh, I, know. Yeah, I really, I really liked the first one. So, um, but I did. I, I, I find myself liking this one more. When I saw the gun case off to the side, and they said, "Oh, we gotta get weapons," you know, and it's like, let's open that gun case, you know, and they, they take the crowbar and they're pushing and pushing. I'm like, oh, 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 oh this is gonna be fun. <laughs> And they pop it open, and you see the guns, and you're like, "Oh, they're gonna use that." That's Chekhov's gun. It, and it's got, it's got, a, it's got a, one of my favorite unsung character actors, Michael Rooker. Right? Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's, he's, he's got a small. He's, he's one of the guys in the tavern. Uh -huh. guy, and, and 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 rebel rousing, and uh -huh. he goes. And, but but um, if you look, if you look him up, you will see how many. Hammer movies he is in, including yeah. one of the grave robbers in Revenge of, of, of Frankenstein. And his name is Michael Ripper. Uh huh. Oh. <laughs> and I love him. And when I saw him in the, in, 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 in the crowd, I, I was like, oh, there, there he goes. I love this guy. I love Michael Ripper. All right. So now we come to, uh, we're going to do our uh, rec ratings and recommendations. Mm -hmm. So start us off. Well, I, I, I I recommend this movie. Uh -huh. I mean, no surprise. I recommend this movie. And the thing is that if I gave the first one four and a half, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I'm saying that this one's better, uh -huh. uh, where else can I go? I, there's no such thing as four and three quarter. Uh -huh. uh, 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 great geeks. So I, I'm giving it uh, five great geeks. Uh -huh. I really recommend this movie. All right. So yeah, um, I completely agree. Uh, we both love this movie more. But just a tad more. That's why I gave the other one four Grey Geeks. This one is four and a half Grey Geeks. I love Don Levy. Despite the alcoholism, I love the fact that there's more action, more guns, more. Uh, there's a car chase. There's a pretty girl also that. Um, that, that, that gets hurt. That gets hurt, yeah. Um, there's more I love. Emotion, more, yes. there's more emotion. And. You know, I, I, I also like the resolution. The resolution at the end is like, oh, okay, you know. Yeah, I can go for that. Uh huh. All right. So. Um, and another thing, the thing is that you're also at a point that you're like, how the hell are they going to win? Uh -huh. you know, and right before the end, you're like, how the hell are they going to win? Uh -huh. You know. And then when 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 we win, yay! When we win, you're like, okay, I can go for that. Yeah, I can go for that. Yeah, it's the resolution does not, I mean, make sense. All right. <laughs> We've come to the part of the show that we call our closing. Yes. Yes. And we call it our closing because we're closing the show. Uh -huh. <laughs> not forever, just for a little while. 
for, for a week. And then, uh, so I usually go, turn to you and ask for a wise missive. But you're not getting. Okay. Not but I have a joke. Okay, but that's fine. A wise missive or a joke. You because if you're not going to be a wise man, be a wise ass. Be a wise that's, that's, And my ass is always wise. Okay. So the joke is this. Married couple fighting all the time. Arguing, screaming at each other, cursing at each other. All the time does married couple fight all the time. Finally, one day, the wife has had it, and she throws her husband out. Get out! Right? So he goes, and he packs his bags, and he packs all his belongings, and he then got his, 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 his stuff, he's carrying his stuff, and he's about to walk out the door when his wife screams at him, I want you to suffer! For the rest of your life, I want you to be miserable and unhappy for the rest of your life. And he turns at the door and he says, so you want me to stay? <laughs> that says so many bad things about being married. <laughs> oh, okay, so grandchildren and children, <laughs> it's okay to be married. <laughs> With that having been said, <laughs> if this is your first time visiting the Mustache and the Beard, um, we have. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Press the like button. I invite you to subscribe if you have not done so. We try to make you laugh while entertaining you and informing you. If something we said has stirred you to comment, please do so. Tell us what we got right or what you think we might have gotten wrong. As always, we say thank you for watching. My name is Louis Matos. I am the mustache. I'm Eli Figueroa. I beat the beard. We say see you later. Hasta la vista. Take it easy. And peace.